It was said that the river of Nwoko had a soul of its own. The villagers believed that the water that flowed through the heart of their land carried both life and death, blessings and curses. But for many years the river was calm and the village thrived in peace. They had forgotten the warnings of the elders who once spoke of the river's restless spirits. That was until the day that a girl named Asha drowned. Asha was known throughout the village as a joyful, spirited girl. Her laughter could be heard as she ran through the streets, her bare feet kicking up the dust of the earth. She was the daughter of a poor fisherman, and though her family had little, she was always filled with light. But as with all things, joy can sometimes hide the deepest sorrows. One hot afternoon, the villagers saw Asha running toward the riverbank, her face streaked with tears. Some said she had argued with her parents, others whispered of a broken promise from a friend. No one knew for certain what had driven her to the river that day, but they saw her small figure vanish into the thickets by the water's edge. The next morning her body was found floating in the river, her lifeless eyes staring up at the sky. The village mourned. Her parents were inconsolable, her friends wept for days and the river, now carrying the weight of her death, seemed to flow heavier. But time as it always does began to heal the wounds. The villagers returned to their daily lives, though a shadow of sorrow lingered in the air. Weeks passed and the memory of Asha's laughter faded, until strange things began to happen. It started with soft eerie sounds in the night. At first it was just the faint trickle of water louder than it should have been. Then came the whispers, soft almost childlike, drifting through the village when the moon was high. The villagers dismissed it as the wind but deep down they knew something was wrong. One evening, as the village gathered near the river for a small festival, a group of children playing by the water came running back, their faces pale with fear. They spoke of hearing Asha's laughter echoing from the river. They swore they saw her reflection in the water, even though she was long gone. At first, the villagers thought it was just the imagination of children. But then more people began to hear it. The sound of Asha's laughter, playful and haunting, always near the river. Some villagers reported seeing ripples in the water when no one was near, and a few even claimed to feel a cold hand brush against them as they walked along the riverbank at dusk. The whispers grew louder, more insistent. They didn't save me, they said. Why didn't they save me? A cold fear gripped the village. It was clear now, Asha's spirit had not found peace. The river, once a source of life, had become a bridge between the living and the dead. Her spirit wandered, tethered to the water that had claimed her life, searching for answers, seeking justice. One night, a young boy named Nkozi, who had been one of Asha's closest friends, found himself drawn to the river. The moon was full and the air was thick with an unnatural stillness. He had heard her voice, clear as day, calling his name from the water. Rosie, come to me. Terrified but unable to resist, Nkozi followed the voice to the riverbank. There, in the shimmering reflection of the moon, he saw her, Asha, standing in the water, her eyes filled with sorrow. Her dress floated gently around her as though she were part of the river itself. She reached out to him, her hand pale and cold. You let me drown, she whispered. Why didn't you come for me? Nkozi fell to his knees, tears streaming down his face. I'm sorry Asha, he cried. We didn't know. We didn't know. Asha's face twisted with grief, and the river around her began to swirl, dark and violent. The water seemed to rise, reaching out like fingers toward Nkozi, pulling him closer to the edge. Just as his feet touched the water, a voice broke through the air, a cry from the village elder who had been watching from afar. Stop! The elder shouted, holding a sacred charm high in the air. Asha you must rest. You must let go. The river stilled and Asha's form flickered like a dying flame. Her eyes, once filled with sorrow, now looked at the elder with confusion. They didn't save me, she whispered again, softer this time, her voice filled with pain. Why didn't they save me? The elder stepped closer to the river, his voice steady and calm. It is not for us to decide who stays and who goes, child. Your time came and the river took you. But now you must find peace or your soul will never be free. Asha's reflection wavered, her once playful spirit now a mere shadow of the girl she had been. Slowly, her hand dropped and the water around her stilled. 
I didn't want to leave, she whispered, her voice barely audible. I was so alone. The elder nodded solemnly. But now you are not alone. You are with the river and the river is with you. Find your rest, Asha. With one last look at Nkozi, Asha's reflection faded into the water, and the river returned to its usual calm. The air felt lighter, and the oppressive heaviness that had weighed on the village for weeks began to lift. The villagers gathered by the river the next morning, offering prayers and gifts to honor Asha's spirit, hoping to finally give her the peace she deserved. The whispers were gone, the strange occurrences ceased, and the river flowed as it once had, quiet and serene. But the villagers would never forget the lesson they had learned. The river had its own will, and those who passed into its waters carried a piece of it with them. And sometimes, when a spirit is restless, it will find its way back, until it finds what it seeks. The village elder warned them to never again take the river's calm for granted. They honored it, revered it, and from that day forward, they made sure to watch over each other, especially near the water's edge. Asha's spirit had found rest, but the river still held many secrets, and no one knew when the next soul would be taken by its depths. If you enjoyed this tale of ghostly hauntings and restless spirits, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more mysterious African folklore and tales of the supernatural.